laptops are a tricky thing. They're way more expensive than their PC counterparts stacked with the same hardware, but if portability is what you need, then they're the only thing that'll do. And if you already need a laptop for other purposes, then investing a little extra to get a gaming laptop definitely seems like a worthwhile investment. Now, we're not here to persuade you that laptops are a worthy substitute for gaming PCs, nor do we want to dissuade you from this. They have their merits, and these merits can be indispensable in certain situations, so just shop according to your needs and let others do the same. Instead, what we want to talk about today is simply how long you can expect a gaming laptop to last. To answer this question, we'll have to focus on four things. Hardware, maintenance, cooling, and software. So without any further ado, let's begin. The hardware is the trickiest part. Unlike with console hardware, games aren't optimized to work their best on any specific piece of PC hardware, full-sized or not. This is simply because console hardware is standardized and PC hardware is as varied as they come. The full breadth of customization and upgradability options is also one of the PC's biggest strengths. But unfortunately, laptops don't get this treatment. So because you can't very well swap in the stock laptop CPU or GPU for a newer and more powerful one, it means that you have to be very careful which specs you opt for. Now, a properly maintained laptop can last you an upwards of 10 years. The hardware in it is bound to get outdated much sooner than that. So let's get a bit more specific. The CPU is not the most important piece of hardware in a gaming laptop, but if you want it to carry its own weight, you'll not want to skimp on it. At the moment, you'll need at least one of the newer i5 or i7 CPUs if you're looking to play new AAA titles. AMD has definitely made some strides in the laptop market, specifically with their APUs that utilize the excellent Vega integrated graphics chips, but as good as these are, we'd still recommend getting a model with a dedicated graphics card for the optimal gaming experience. Now, when building a desktop PC, you have to worry about the motherboard compatibility and bottlenecking, but since you aren't actually handpicking each and every component for a laptop, this won't ever be an issue. So just decide on which GPU you want and that's the most important thing. Still, you'll often be faced with a selection of different laptops running on that GPU, so just remember that paying a bit extra for a better CPU is something you'll certainly appreciate a couple of years down the line. Now, as for the GPU, the first thing you should do is see how the GPU performs in certain games that are about as old as it is, and how it performs relative to other models. User Benchmark is a great site for this. It may not be the most accurate source, but it will still give you an excellent overall impression of what the GPU pecking order is. It's also a good idea to check out how well that GPU handles some specific games, both the ones you want to play and the ones that are known for being particularly demanding. And the best way to do so is just to Google it. Guru 3D Tom's Hardware and TechSpot are just a few of the many trustworthy sites you will find that display this information. Regardless of which site you visit, it will need to provide you with all of the following. The exact FPS measurements, preferably with different maximum, minimum, and average values, the in-game quality preset that the benchmark was run on, and the exact configuration of the PC used for testing. For example, if we wanted to see how a laptop with a GTX 1050 would handle a Deus Ex Mankind Divide, we'd find that the benchmark test running on Full HD with the high quality preset would yield an average FPS of 30. Both the game and the GPU were released in 2016. So how long can you expect the GPU to hold up this frame rate at this preset? Well, this isn't an exact science since some games are more demanding than others, but a general rule of thumb is this. You shouldn't have to drop any settings in future games for the next two years in order to maintain this frame rate. But after that, you'll have to keep slowly dropping the quality preset. All in all, a laptop GPU would be good for about five years before it starts getting obsolete. Of course, some of the more powerful GPUs like the GTX 1070 or even the GTX 1060 are more likely to die of old age than grow obsolete. But even then, you'll still see the quality preset slowly dip over the years. You can also find benchmarks for certain laptops on YouTube that'll give you a better visual representation of what you should expect. Although not all laptops get this treatment. Now, the final performance-relevant piece of hardware that you'll need to keep an eye out on is the RAM. We've already discussed how much RAM is necessary for gaming in a previous video, so give that a view if you want a more in-depth analysis. But the bottom line is, 8GB is still the sweet spot for cost-effective gaming, but 16GB is by no means an unreasonably high amount. Anything fewer than 8GB, however, is insufficient and will lead to some vexing bouts of stuttering. Still, the situation is much more forgiving with regards to RAM since you can easily add more. 
Now, every computer requires regular maintenance in order to live long and function properly, and laptops are no exception. Granted, you can't very well open up your laptop like you would a desktop PC and clean every component separately, but that doesn't mean you can't get the dust out fairly easily. All you'll need is a can of compressed air. So the first thing you should do is turn the laptop off and give it time to cool. Now just hold the laptop on its side and bring the can close to the intake grills on the bottom, and then blow away and watch the dust shoot out. It's preferable to tilt and angle the laptop a bit as you're doing this so that you can get rid of more dust. But it is imperative that the laptop is placed on its side while you do this. If the laptop is placed horizontally, then you'll have to hold the can horizontally, and this is a huge red flag. You must always hold the can upright so that no liquid air can escape, as this can damage the hardware. Now just repeat this process for every grill until you see no more dust coming out of the laptop and you're done. As for the cooling, there aren't many things you can do to improve the airflow inside a laptop. Nevertheless, this is precisely why you should make sure to do the few things that you can. First of all, avoid placing the laptop on your lap or bed or any soft surface really, as this will close off the intake grills on the bottom and seriously hinder the airflow. Of course, given how gaming laptops are packed with powerful hardware crammed into a compact space, you're likely to want to take an added measure and use a cooling pad. A good cooling pad can work wonders to improve the airflow inside the laptop, so it's definitely something you should look to purchase if you plan on pushing the hardware to its maximum. Now we've actually made a whole video about how to keep your laptop cool, the link is in the description so make sure to check that out if you want to know more about this as we won't go into any further detail in this video. So let's move on to the final point we want to talk about today which is the software. Laptops can run all the same operating systems that desktop PCs can with all the same benefits and drawbacks. This is something we've talked about extensively on this channel so we'll just skip all the formalities and say that if you want the smoothest possible gaming experience, you want to get Windows. If nothing else, it has the most games. Now it used to be a serious problem that people would buy a decent laptop only to have a new version of Windows pop up out of nowhere that said laptop can't run. But with Microsoft's new approach to refining Windows 10 via online updates instead of releasing new versions every two or three years, this is no longer an immediate issue. What this means is that it's more appealing to get a gaming laptop now than it ever was before. This isn't to say that we won't get a new version of Windows ever again. We will, although chances are it won't be called Windows 11. Maybe they'll just skip a few numbers and jump right up to Windows 12 or 13. Who knows? When this does end up happening, however, you can always make the switch to Linux as it has been known to perform much better on dated hardware than Windows. So when all said and done, how long can you expect a gaming laptop to last? Well, if you do proper and regular maintenance and you use a cooling pad to help it out a little, you can easily see a laptop grow up to be 10 years old. But for the purposes of gaming, most laptops will become obsolete after 5 years from their GPU's release. Again, this is a general rule of thumb, but it's been proven quite effective. And that about does it for this video. We hope that you found it helpful. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you did so that we can keep on making more videos like this. Oh, and while we're on the topic of laptops, we definitely plan on making a list of the best gaming laptops sometime in the future, so do come back and check if it's up yet by the time you decide to make your purchase. You can also click on the bell icon if you don't want to take any chances. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few, and as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.